We desperately need more shoes and clothing. What I have, I took by force, sir. Our patriotic merchants hid their goods. Yes, I know. General Washington. Sir, a word with you. Privately. You know me, sir, as a man of principle who chose to fight in America for the cause of freedom. Yes, well, I'm aware of your sacrifice, General Conway. How can I help you? The question is how I can help you, General. You seem to surround yourself by men not worthy of their influence. Sullivan is without enterprise. Green is vain and lacks judgment. And as for your green aides, one has not yet even attained manhood. Then, whose advice should I seek? You need me, General. For without proper training, your soldiers are hopeless. A useless, humiliated mob who will be forever driven and beaten across mountains and rivers until you have no army left. See that your brigade is ready to march. Sir. Uh, immediately, sir. Sir. You didn't have enough to torment me with grasping merchants. Congressmen serving their precious states before their country, but these pompous, self-serving officers who... Look at those men. Starving. No shoes. But they're willing to fight and die for freedom. Even if we have to cross a hundred rivers and mountains, we will not give up. We'll hit them where they least expect us, and we'll survive. You'll survive. for the sick wagon? You mean the death wagon? One foot in front of the other, men! And we'll get wherever His Excellency wants us to go! In Washington! Yes. Yeah. This dispatch just arrived from the Congress, announcing a major victory in New York. The British invasion force from Canada has been smashed. Benedict Arnold's charge broke the enemy, and General Gates has forced the surrender of Burgoyne's entire Northern Army. Thank God we've needed such a victory. News from Congress. Shouldn't General Gates have reported to you first, sir? <laughs> I like our dear friend, General Gates. Gentlemen, we're all in this together. Order an extra gill of rum for each man to toast his brothers to the North. And a cannon salute to celebrate General Gates' great victory. Yes, sir. Sing out, men! Keep your spirits up! Father and I went down to camp along with Captain Goody. There we saw the men and boys as thick as hasty pudding. Yankee doodle, keep it up. Yankee doodle, Andy. Mind the music and the step and the girls be handy. There we saw a thousand men as rich as fire David. What they wasted every day, I wish it could be saved. Now, and make sure that that's sent to General Green first thing in the morning. Yes, sir. I don't know what you're all grumbling about. This is, this is luxury. 
compared to some of the accommodations I had when I was surveying a wilderness for Lord Fairfax. <laughs> uh, could I have ever been so young? <laughs> Let's stop for tonight, Joe. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I have a message from General Sterling. Bad news, sir? has learned of a letter General Conway sent to Gates in which he blames General Washington for all our defeats. Oh, listen to this. Heaven has determined to save your country or a weak general and bad counselors would have ruined it. And Conway and Gates were in league against him? They would put Gates in his place. <laughs> the ultimate revenge. A housekeeper's son driven from the British regulars by snobbery, hands that army its greatest defeat. I know another who has been humbled, and his initials are GW. For the good of the cause, sir, you should take over as Commander-in-Chief. Good Lord, Mifflin. What brings you north, Thomas? Congress business, General, and a matter that will alarm you. The only thing that can alarm us this day, sir, is an empty glass. Come, join us. General Gates, could we speak in private? Gentlemen, your indulgence, please. <laughs> an extract from Conway's letter to you has somehow reached General Washington. What? The cat is out of the bag, General. So we will need to be clever in our defense, for so many still love that man. This damnable business will mean that we cannot now promote Conway. Now, just more difficult to approach influential people openly. But there is another way. Washington himself has said that an experienced foreign officer should be appointed Inspector General. Inspector General? Of course. Why not? Conway shall be Inspector General. Washington will be so furious at Congress that his pride will force him to resign. <laughs> Michael, okay, lift that over there. Yeah. Take that piece there. Pass me another there, lads. Come on, the other way. That's it. Bring that wagon up this way. That's it. Here, lad, move it. Move it, move it two inches to the left there. Just sit there and stare, keep working. The general has stirred a lot of lazy stumps with his prize of twelve dollars. The squad that builds the best hut fastest in each regiment. And if we win, what do you think we'll buy with that prize? Shoes for our bloody feet, which the general should have given us in the first place. You win the prize for the best complainer in the army. You think I don't have just cause? That Congress proclaiming a day of thanksgiving? How about it, lads? A sumptuous feast to close out this year of high living. Our country, ever mindful of its suffering army, opens its warm heart wide, so that each of us valiant defenders of freedom get what? A half cup of rice and a whole tablespoon a vinegar! Yeah! <laughs> Beware, sir. Gates will try to use Conway against you. I've asked my aides to leave us alone so that you may talk freely. I don't think it's wise to discuss General Gates in their presence. My God. It galls me beyond measure. That jackass trumpets himself as a great victor. The man never got close enough to the battle to smell gunpowder. I understand your bitterness, but you... But I must forget all that. Yes, you must.
to you, sir. To our cause. I know what you have to endure, my friend. To be relieved of your command by General Gates and then to return and lead the attack. You saw your duty and you did it. And I'm proud of you. I like to think it is what you would have done, sir. Your leg, I had no idea you were so seriously wounded. Well, at the very least, I shall be able to tell when bad weather is in prospect. <laughs> I didn't come to beg sympathy, sir. But to offer my services once more to my commander-in-chief. Well, once we get you well enough, you shall have a post worthy of a major general. Forgive me, sir. Hmm. Marquis de Lafayette and Colonel Lawrence have returned from Congress and would speak with you. Yes, warm yourself, General. Yes? General, please. Sir, our fears were justified. Congress has elected Horatio Gates, President of the Board of War. And is to keep his rank as Senior Major General in the army that he's now to supervise. He wants it all, sir. Our first duty is to save this country from the enemy. If we start a war between brother patriots, it could destroy the cause quicker than British guns. What if your enemies within are the more deadly? Dominant, Sergeant, is the closest thing we'll get to meet. <laughs> Whew, that's a blizzard wind. How are we supposed to keep warm with no decent victuals in our gut? <laughs> I know I'm starving when I dream of eating a Sunday goose instead of tupping my wife. <laughs> Watery goo that turn the stomach of a starving goat. It's a handsome reward indeed for all that hup. Two, three, four. My two left feet are bloody and sore. So what do you say we do no more? <laughs> May our commissary of purchases live on fire, cake, and water till his belly be glued to his heart. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least, my dear Marquis, they still laugh at their hunger. <laughs> the nearer farms have all been stripped clean. We must send foraging parties even further into the countryside. Peggy Shippen were doing the rebel general and his wife as Punch and Judy. It's <laughs> really quite clever. And what did our captured rebel general think of it? I haven't laughed so hard in years, Lord Cornwallis. <laughs> <laughs> Though I doubt it will promote peace. <laughs> and I understand you are now a warm advocate of achieving as quickly as possible. Uh, general Howe tells me you have a plan that would lead to a British victory. Quite simple. If um, if uh, Maryland is reduced and uh, Virginia prevented from marching aid to the frozen rebel army in Pennsylvania, the whole is is forever divided and uh, a period put to the war. Here, here. Excuse me. I 
cannot help feeling for that pitiful rabble camped on some godforsaken hillside. Wasteless sympathy on traitors, sir. Huh? Still, they once were our brothers. The year of their tribulations is... They deserve to suffer. Perhaps one surprise blown now, when they least expect it, will finish off this stupid rebellion. But our spies tell us Mr. Washington's army, exposed to this dreadful winter, will simply disappear. Perhaps all right. Let them die in the snow. But, General, we must do something now. There is a major plot against your excellency. And it isn't just Thomas Mifflin and Richard Henry Lee. Conway has been whispering to Congress. And now there's a strong faction in the Board of War. Gates is their hero, and you are blamed for every defeat. You know what they're up to, sir. Sir, sir I... I... Sir, yeah. they want to force you to resign. I say stop them now before it is too late. You must confront the Congress. Expose the plot. Root out that nest of traitors and demand that you take over the complete running of the war. To make George Washington a tyrant, is that what we're fighting for? The cabal intends to put Gates or Lee if they can get him back from the British or even Conway at the head of this army. Now, would you stand by, sir, and let that happen? Yes, by God, I will. For what we do here will light the way for all of those who come after us. Sir, but should we want no kings or tyrants, but free men? Sir, you do not have to I, I cherish this. all of your concern for me, gentlemen. But this is something I must handle in my own way. Now, you've, you've all had a long day. You must be exhausted. Good night. Good night, sir. Good night, sir. Bonsoir, mon général. Sir. Oh, oh. Yes. The new Inspector General has arrived. Major General Conway, sir. You seem surprised, General Washington. Had not Congress advised you of my arrival? It is your new rank that surprises me, sir. It is merely suitable to an Inspector General. Our Brigadier Senior to you will be enraged. I care little for the opinions of others. I have come to do a job, and you may rest assured I shall do it. The resolution of Congress that charges me reforming this army. The Board of War was to supply you with instructions. Where are they, General Conway? Since I hurried here, sir, they will be forwarded. Then you will wait. Sir? You cannot serve as Inspector General until I see your instructions. General Washington, I have come a great distance to help you. I had hoped you'd show suitable gratitude. For what? Your presumption? <laughs> you refer to the letter I wrote to General Gates. I'm referring to you, sir, and who you are. Why must your excellency, who commands an army raised for the defense of liberty, conduct such a tyrannical inquisition? I will not listen to Let him finish. Let us compose our differences. You need me, sir, to make that rabble out there into a real army. While you were off swilling wine and courting Congress for your own advancement, that rabble worked and drilled in the snow to turn themselves into a real army. And you are not worthy to carry their coat part. Colonel Hamilton, show General Conway to the door. Sir. You and General Gates and your Board of War have just been given notice. Notice? General Washington is the Commander-in-Chief of this army.
my dear. You must not keep me away from you another winter or I shall die. You're so worn looking. Thinner than I can ever remember. If only you could say the same for me. How many times must I tell you I would have you just as you are? Come here. I trust your journey was agreeable. Oh, yes. I paid a visit to your mother on my way. Ah, yes, I've just written her. What does she want now? She's still complaining of her circumstances, George. The war goes badly. Never enough food and supplies. The British want my head, and now I must endure yet another of dear mother's complaints. <laughs> All right, all right, let's hear it. I'm afraid that she's been telling all who will listen that the Virginia Assembly should vote her a pension. A pension? When she has children who give her everything she needs? <laughs> oh, God bless her. You know, if I unleashed Mother on the British, the war would be over tomorrow. <laughs> My feet are so cold from the long trip. There's only one way they'll ever get warm again. In bed with you. I've thought about nothing else for the last hundred miles. your soldiers. If they gave up and just went home, I could hardly blame them. George. They go hungry, half naked. I badger the Congress. Nothing happens. That's not your fault. I'm their commander, Martha. And you've done all you can. Have I? We met one defeat after another. I may not be the man to lead this struggle. You are. You're the only one. Yes, that's the wife talking. Look at me. I once told you that you are not like George Mason and the others. Men who play with ideas and words. Once you decided we must be free, you had to do something about it. You took this command. You'll not turn from it, no matter how discouraged you may be. The men need you. You won't fail them. I know you too well. Joseph, Joseph, stay warm. Stay warm.
Sergeant, Who? it's Joseph. Prue? Who's Prue? Prue? Who's Prudence? Ain't just as frost feet. Now he's out of his head. Keeps calling for somebody like he don't know where he is. He's burning up. We got to get him to the sick hut. Come on, help me. What are you doing to me? Joseph. Why are you carrying me? Let me up. Joseph, your feet froze. And you got the fever. Surgeon's got to see you. Captain! Stop the carriage! No! Wait. No! 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 Take me in another surgeon! No! Bro! Bro, help Joseph. me, please! Sorry. Help me! What can I do? Got to get him in the surgeon's hut, man. Get him! Get him. Get him. Don't Don't him. Take me in, Come please! Come on! Get him. Get him. Please! Lord, when he gets out of there alive, please! Joseph. Please! Please! No, please, please, please! Hold his foot steady. We need more meat, sir. Guard. Not be disturbed tonight. And I brought all the sergeants together. Busy and I must see his exit. And I want to see his exit. General, General cannot be disturbed. What is it, Captain? Sir, I told Your the sergeant that... We'd have a word with you. Yes, come in, sir. All of you. We are, uh, sergeants from all the different regiments in the camp. And we know we've been complaining a terrible lot lately about no food and everything. Well, we got to talking, and we decided we couldn't sleep tonight unless we told you that we're still with you, Your Excellency, as long as you need us. Right, men? Right. 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 And that's all we have to say, sir. So good night. Thank you. 